Welcome everybody to another lore video on a faction from Total War Warhammer. This time around we're looking at Hochland, which might be differently pronounced, but from what I know in German that's how this thing is pronounced. But note aside, if you look for Hochland, you will find that it is a company that makes a lot of cheesy products. From cheese, to things that look like cheddar cheese, basically cheese makers. But now let's start. Now the official name for Hochland is the Grand Barony of Hochland. Now it is a major and founding imperial province that lies in the north central lands of the Empire of Man. The lands of Hochland, like its neighbor Ostlan, has within its boundaries part of the Middle Mountains and vast tracts of untamed wilderness. Because of this, it is often compared to its larger and wealthier northern neighbor, Ostlan's little brother. Is a term often used, although not in Hochland, and you might expect why, because <coughs> it's degrading for them. Despite their backwards reputation, the people of Hochland are no less sturdy nor skilled than their neighbors in terms of military cap capability, with many of the best archers and marksmen regiments with the Empire's military having been born within the province itself. Like their brethren, in neighboring provinces, the Hochland people are also quite resourceful, a trail that is not often learned from a young age to all sons of a Hochland family. As well as being resourceful, the people of Hochland are amazing hunters and trackers, a trait that originated from their formal tribal traditions as the Kerusin people. Let's look a little bit at the land of Hochland. <clears throat> Compromising the eastern end of the Dark Walled Forest, Hochland is a heavily wooded province bounded by the Middle Mountains in the to the northeast and the waters of the Droic Wasser, Talabek and Wolfsrud rivers on the west, south and east, respectively. West beyond a strip of Hochland on the left bank of the Droic Wasser lies Middleland and Talabakland. Is the southern bank of the Talbach River, where Ostland grinds Hochland's northern eastern border. Deeper in the Hochland are the Waste Hills, a treacherous mixture of hill country and fens, watched over by the lonely fort of Schiphol, I guess. Though mostly covered in the for in forest, the farms along the riverbanks are around the village. Around and around the village are the fertile are fertile fertile, thanks to the many rivers and streams that flow south from the uplands of the Middle Mountains. This makes Hochland self-sufficient in food, although luxury victuals have to be imported from Middenheim and Talbaheim. Heavy snows in the winter and rains in the spring make Hochland towns susceptible to flooding, though the prior ruling house of Tusenhochen invested heavily in dikes to control the flood water. Heading north from the Talbeck, the land rises gradually to the massifs of the Middle Mountains, forbidding be claimed by many, but wholly controlled by none. <clears throat> I'm sorry for that one. Three main roads wind through the province, the Old Forest Road, the North Road and the New Road. The Old Forest Road runs from Middleheim and Talbaheim and beyond. The Hochland portion leading from Grudenwald near the sh Shire Shrine town of Groiden before coming to the Talbeck Ferry. The North Road carries traffic from Wolfenburg in Ostland to the town of Grudenwald. Well, <clears throat> the New Road opens the way from the lands of the southern Ostland to the town of Delbes and then to the capital of Aldorf. These were built by prior counts as part of a plan to develop Hochland's economy through trade, tolls and tourism. Hochland's main trade is timber and woodcrafts. Thick wood of oak and skymore grow in the south, while pines and cedar are in the north. The woods of lumbermen cut down the trees, trim the trunks and float the logs downstream to miles in the settlement of Esk, Bergendorf, Krudelwald, and Herjig. 
This is an interesting tactic that was used by many people in our society, and many times when it comes to cutting forests, they would use the rivers to transport them. And there were people crazy enough to go with the logs, but as a story for another time. Now, the logs are then brought, bought by brokers, loaded on barges, and shipped out. Woodsmen in the south were awaiting the construction of a mile of a mill along the Talbeck by Count Aldebrad Ludenhof. So they won't have to make a delay in the shipping in shipping the goods to Alhenhof in Middleland. But that has since been delayed. <clears throat> the Milan Herig is a recent and quite controversial development for the electoral count of Oswald. Osland felt it, felt it encourage illegal logging in his lands and demanded tolls for lumber floating down the Wolf's Run River. Deep within the forest lies the Oasis Hills, a sparsely inhabited area of moorlands and low hills that are mainly traveled by poachers and licensed trappers and hunters. Much of the land is a royal demands, domain of the Counts of Hockland. Watch over by the warden of Fort Schiphol. Okay, now that we have the land a little bit out of the way, we can see that their trade is basically being the forest. I think they'll be pretty good friends with some else. But let's look at the inhabitants of Hawkland. Hawklanders are for are for the most part descendants from the proud Kesseren tribe. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Having mingled for some time with the Tolens of Tabokland, the tribe eventually left the lands of the Great Forest and migrated to a small area near the Middle Mountains. Amidst verdant woods filled by game, these people have found the home they've always wanted. Less warlike than their neighbors, they contented themselves on hunting, fishing, and singing praise to Tal and Raya. When other human tribes or war bands of orcs and beastmen would raid, the early Hawklanders would melt back into their force, using deadly ambush and warcraft to defeat their enemies. By the time of Sigmar, the Hawklanders have <clears throat> become skilled, scout, skilled scouts and skirmishers, and maintain very good relationship with Sigmar, Sigmar's own Anbergon tribe during the rule of his father. When the barbaric Norseal tribes began invading the lands of Kerosin and Tolens, King Bjorn rode forth to aid his fellow rulers against the Chaos worshippers. Though the valiant king of the Unbergon died fighting, the Norsil host, he had driven them back from the lands of the Kerosin. Thus King Alois became a fast and loyal friend to Bjorn's son, Sigmar, and contributed greatly in his wars to unite the tribes. Thus Sigmar made Alois the first count of Kerosin. Now Hoholand is a small but proud province, famed for its hunters and trackers. Their traditional dishes of fried vision, 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 whatever, that's French for meat, I guess, have been exported across the empire, but gourmands say it still tastes best cooked under the night nice sky of Hawkland. At their best, Hawklanders are loyal, valiant, and adaptable. Modern Hawklanders are more amongst are amongst the most open-minded and friendly people in the Empire, with their lands being a crossroad for so much of the Northern and Eastern Empire, they have developed tolerance, tolerance that is considered unusual everywhere else. Though many worshippers of Tal, Laraya and Sigmar's contact with travelers and merchants using these roads has made Ulfric popular in the Northeast, while Shalaya has a strong cult. Contact with educated outsiders have led to a respect for intellectuals, so much so that the rulers of Herrick encourage the founding of a private academy and even a small skull of wizardry. <clears throat> now, recognizing their lands are unsuited to large-scale farming or cattle raising, as we've seen that Averland has a nice taste for it, the people have done what they can to encourage what others to visit and leave some of their money behind. Shrines to several cults can be found in most towns and villages, each claiming to be the site of a miracle and having been having blessed relics for sale. Fortified couching inns sprang up 
along the roads for the convenience of travelers, though several had been bought by the rival Tunnelway and Wolfrunners coaching company. Fond of hunting in all its forms, those of the loyal friendship and John Ballads, Hollanders are, among, are also known to be easily distracted by the prospect of little sport. <clears throat> they are the people that will go all their way to hunt. Now, some folk also whisper that their valiant nature is due to the most, in most, in the most part, from their native, more than innate loyalty. Jokes about Hawklanders who love their bow or rifle more than their wives are common. The most are too rude to repeat. I guess they're dwarven jokes. This dedication to marksmanship has resulted in the excellent Hawkland long rifle regiments that have provided so useful that have been proved so useful in the recent times. The Hawkland spirit is said to resist the defeatism in all its forms, even on to death. In recent, in recent years, however, much of what happened to change the normal optimistic trusting Hawkland characters. Now, <clears throat> the capital of Hawkland is Hergic, and is the home to the Luderholf family, which Luderholf is the family of the electoral count. Now, Esk is a small mining and logging village at the foothills of the middle mountains, and Grudy is a small shrier. Shrine village dedicated to the worship of many imperial deities. Now, if you're wondering about the government, it's feudal with assembly of barons, burghers, and churchmen, as it should be. And the electoral count is called Ald Aldbrand Huddle Hoff. Again, if you are really interested, I would recommend you. <clears throat> Look at Hochland, but if you go on Google Images, you'll see the cheese company. In any way, thank you for watching, and I hope you can come back next time.